Hello, and thank you for joining the Catholic Mass sponsored by Dignity Washington for the LGBTQ community, our family, and friends. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, also known as Gaudete Sunday. My name is Christopher Hinkle, and I serve on the board of Dignity Washington. I did say it's a Catholic Mass, so that means it's time for some announcements. Recently, all Dignity Washington members were sent a survey by email. This survey asks for your input on our current activities and on options for the new year. Your input will allow the Dignity leadership to make more informed decisions. If you haven't yet submitted your survey, please do so. Wednesday is our third Advent Faith Sharing Meeting. Please join us on Zoom from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Wednesday for that. Membership renewals for 2021 are now open. We encourage you to renew your membership, or if you are not currently a member, join Dignity Washington to support our mission and stay up to date on all our upcoming activities. Please view our website at dignitywashington.org for more information. Even though we cannot yet gather in person, we are still an active community. Please remember that you can join us online Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. for our socials on Zoom. Additionally, pray the rosary with us on Zoom each Sunday at 5.30 p.m. and on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. I urge you to check out the bulletin sent to all members each week by email to see all the opportunities to connect. This may be a difficult time for you, and it's easy to feel isolated, but please know that Dignity Washington is here for you. Reach out if you need support. We hope you continue to give financially to Dignity Washington to support our mission as an LGBTQ Catholic organization. Your support allows us to be able to provide these services to our community. Go to DignityWashington.org donate or click the link in the video description. Our Masses are put together with contributions from Dignity Washington members participating in person and remotely. We thank all the individuals who have contributed to making this Mass possible in the credits. Today's Mass is about to begin. In prayer, we invite you to use whatever reverent term for God you find most comfortable, and we encourage you to participate fully from wherever you are. Welcome. Please join in singing our opening song, People Look East. Hello and welcome as we celebrate this third Sunday of Advent Gaudete Sunday. We refresh ourselves with the joy of God's love and the fact that we can be together in this celebration, whether here in person or virtually. We rejoice and give thanks to God. And let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate these mysteries, let us be mindful of God's generosity and grace. Let us also be mindful of our own sins and shortcomings and turn to our loving God for that forgiveness which flows through us and out into the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray to attain, attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. First letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast 
to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The Word of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing? if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across from the Jordan, where John was baptizing. And my sisters and brothers, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was uh, quite a few years ago, 40 years to be exact, I remember my Advent season getting off to a, a very, very rough and, and rocky start. The year was 1980. It was at the very, very beginning of Advent that news came that four American Women missionaries had been murdered in the brutal war in El Salvador. That was enough to shake anybody up. But the thing that, that shook, shook me up, up almost as much was the, the death, the passing of one of my great heroes, Dorothy Day, the founder of the Catholic Worker Movement, a woman who was remarkable in more ways than I could begin to enumerate. And there was a, a, an additional note of sadness for me in her passing, because for quite a while I had, I had harbored this fond hope that I would have the chance to meet her face to face one day. And I had speculated about taking a trip up to New York to meet her. I even had a, a, little, a little bit of an entree. Um, two members of the community that I was in, the missionary servants, had actually been very close to her in her younger years, a priest named Father Joachim Benson and a missionary servant's sister named Sister Peter Claver. 
had been actually quite influential with Dorothy Day in her younger years. I knew both Sister Peter Claver and I knew Father Joachim. They were both very elderly at that time. But the passing of, of Dorothy Day, I just remember that it really uh, kind of knocked the wind out of my sails. I was uh, a very young priest. Uh, at that time, I had been assigned to uh, campus ministry to do vocation work for our community, and I was assigned to the University of Kentucky in Lexington, which had a very, very large and active Newman Club. It was a, a, and a, a tremendous proportion of Catholics. Um, in, that, in that student body. So the community sent me there to do vocation work. That's a whole other story, a whole other, you know, sermon. <laughs> but anyway, I, I just remember um, being thrown. Uh, the news from Central America uh, was devastating, and then uh, losing Dorothy Day, even though she was elderly at that time, and she was sicker than I think a lot of people realized, it felt like this, this opportunity or this chance had just evaporated, and I just remember it being um, very deflating for me. She was someone that um, I idolized, um, her writing, and of course her example had been a great inspiration to me. So Advent that year really felt like it had been knocked off kilter for me. But as the years began to roll by, and I continued to read the work of, of Dorothy Day and to some greater or lesser extent understand more about her. And there have been some um, wonderfully illuminating books and articles about her in those 40 years since she left us. I, I began to realize in retrospect that one of the great gifts that she left me and I think the church and the world, was that she, in her own way, taught us about the meaning of Advent, or at least I can speak for myself and say, for me, the timing of her death, the processing of it, and my continued desire to know more about her and to know her took me to a deeper understanding of this season and even this Gaudete Sunday, what it means. And even more than the season of Advent, what I came to realize was that Dorothy Day, in her unique way, made me more familiar with the figure of John the Baptist. And there were three parts of that, and let me just briefly explain what they were and how they worked on me. Dorothy Day lived what I think could modestly be called a very uncomfortable life, especially the latter part of her life, when she was starting those houses of hospitality and welcoming in the most vulnerable, the most marginalized, the most disrespected people of all, welcoming them, no questions asked, into the houses of hospitality, in conditions that many of us, I think, would find way beyond uncomfortable but intolerable. But she felt this was her calling to welcome people in, no questions asked, regardless of the state of their health, their mental health, or their hygiene. She welcomed them in. She lived a very uncomfortable life as I'm sure John the Baptist did. But more than living an uncomfortable life, Dorothy Day had a gift of making other people extremely uncomfortable, and I count myself in that number, and she made institutions especially uncomfortable. I think that the impact she had on the church, especially the hierarchy, was paralleled only by the impact she had on the government of the United States in terms of making everybody uncomfortable, making everybody play from their back foot, questioning all the assumptions, putting everything on the table. So living an uncomfortable life and making the larger world uncomfortable 
was a wonderful reflection of the person and the character of John the Baptist. Secondly, like John the Baptist, Dorothy Day bore unrelenting witness to the light. Her life was like the finger in Buddhism that points to the moon. She wanted her life to point people in the direction of Christ, and she never, never relented. As John the Baptist was the herald, as John the Baptist pointed people, whether they wanted to be pointed or not, in the direction of Christ, she did that. And she made people ask deep and unrelenting questions about their commitment to the person of Christ. It was through the lens of Dorothy Day that over those years, over those many years, that the mission and the character of John the Baptist has come into ever clearer focus for me. And finally, Dorothy Day was a champion of peace. And it was not the peace that the world gives or what most of us would consider to be peace. There was nothing about this peace that was tranquil or comfortable or relaxed. The peace that Dorothy Day championed found its expression in justice, in the corporal works of mercy, and in the relentless questioning of the assumptions, not just of the civil government, but of the very church itself. The peace that she brought through her life and witness was the very peace of Christ which does not leave us alone. So it was through this remarkable woman whom I never was able to meet in the flesh who took the Advent season for me, turned it upside down, and shook, 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 and never stopped shaking. And here I am, 40 years later, sharing with you, my brothers and sisters, the example of this remarkable human being who teaches us not just about John the Baptist, but who teaches us about the very presence of the kingdom of God, alive in our midst, alive within us. And Dorothy Day never stops asking about the kingdom of God and us. It's here, it's now, and what are you going to do about it? never stops. We are in a period of intense darkness and fear at this time as the spiking numbers of the pandemic continue to rise. We're in a, a period that I think is marked by apprehension and anxiety as we pray, pray to survive the current administration in hopes that we'll make it to the next one. It feels like the clouds of darkness are upon us and even inside of us. This is so intense. And for me, for me, there can be no better guide at this time than Dorothy Day, who once famously said, don't you dare call me a saint. You're not going to dismiss me that easily. I'm going to cling to her. Because in the face of injustice, intolerance, racism, scandal, corruption, she is there still, like John the Baptist, 
bearing witness to the light, proclaiming the peace of God, and by damn, making us uncomfortable every day. I wanted to meet her. I wanted to at least shake her hand 40 years ago. And as I stand before you now on this Gaudete Sunday, I have to say, maybe I did meet her. Maybe I have encountered her. And she's not letting me go. Amen. Having heard and considered the Holy Word of God, let us now profess our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, crucified, died, died, and and was buried. He descended descended into hell. hell. On the the third third day, he arose again from the dead. dead. He He ascended into heaven heaven, and is seated seated at the right hand of God, the Father Father Almighty. Almighty. From From there, there, he will will come come to judge the living and the dead. dead. I believe believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Catholic Church, the communion communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence, let us now go before our loving God with our prayers and petitions. Our response this evening will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That all the baptized, anointed by the Spirit, may proclaim the good news of this year of the Lord's favor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our prayer. That the Lord God may cause righteousness and praise to spring up as a garden of peace for all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord our hear our prayer. That those held captive by disease or addiction, by prejudice or oppression, may be released to rejoice in the liberty of God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord our, prayer. hear our prayer. That we may recognize the one who stands among us in the brokenhearted and gladly serve Christ by binding up their wounds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. That we may hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil, and be sanctified entirely for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, especially Lisa, Courtney, Owen, Lizzie, Lauren, Marie, Vic, Tom, Jim, Steve, Gerald, Scott, Joe, Larry, and Retha, that they may be made sound and whole again, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. That the faithfully departed, especially Cody, George, Lords, Ilian, Harry, Le- Jerry, Robert, James, Edward, and from the Dignity community, Maurice LaPierre, Father Frank Bober, Father George Anderson, Art Ham, and Tom Crage, that they may be clothed with the garment of salvation at the banquet of the Lamb, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions we offer now in silence. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord, prayer. Hear our prayer. Loving God, giver of all good gifts, we lay our petitions before you, confident that your love and generosity will provide us with everything we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Creator of the 
stars of night, your people's everlasting light. O Christ, Redeemer of us all, we pray you hear us when we call. Come, O Lord, and bring your light, O radiant star, our hearts delight. Emmanuel, with your love the dark dispel. In sorrow that the ancient curse should doom to death the universe, you came, O oh Savior, to set free. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be found worthy by God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. this day our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil now and evermore. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of that peace. sins of the world. Have 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you should continue. enter under my roof, mm -hmm. but only say Amen. the word and my soul shall be healed. Yeah. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the spirit of Advent joy be with you and stay with you through the rest of this holy season and into the new year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon us and stay with us forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Raise us to